All right, so uh, the drone actually did survive that. Got some scratches on it and some of the propellers broke, uh, but I replaced them and now it works fine. But the reason that I crashed was that I had forgotten that I turned off the obstacle avoidance. So therefore, usually what happens is it sees an obstacle like the trees and it will break and it'll stop. But since I turned it off, it crashed and I got scared for a couple couple minutes there, but it works now, so that's good. So in case you were wondering, it works. And also, this is actually related to the video that I'm making right now. And uh, the part that's related is the obstacle avoidance in these drones, which is similar to the like self-driving part in Teslas and like other self-driving cars. And what that is, is basically they use some sort of like machine learning. And so kind of how that would work in, let's say, a Tesla, is that they basically get an image feed as far as I understand it. And let's say that they get a picture of a street and on the side of the street, there's a person. Then the machine learning algorithm or the model will basically try to calculate whether uh, the person is likely to move into the street or away from the street or maybe parallel to the street. And based on that, it will then make a decision. So basically if it thinks that the person is likely to be moving out into the street then the car might break or uh, it might get ready to move a little bit to the side or something like that and that is kind of how i believe that it works and basically that's how machine learning works as far as i understand it it basically takes some sort of input variables and tries to predict what the output is going to be uh, based on the input and i think that machine learning is one of the most exciting parts of software development right now and I figured it'd be interesting if we create like a simpler uh, machine learning model uh, to basically just predict the temperature on different dates. So future temperatures. So what's the temperature going to be tomorrow or next week or something like that. And also I will leave links in the description of this video to all the different articles that I read that I thought was really useful. So that then maybe you have a better chance at getting this working a lot faster than I did. Uh, if you just read those articles and also in this video after like completing the build i will try to explain how machine learning works and how the program that i wrote works at least as best as i can so in case you want to skip ahead to that uh, here's the timestamp, and i will leave that in the description of this video as well all right so uh, let's get into it all right so uh, what we'll start with is just going to be figuring out how to do the machine learning thing and the kind of the best way to do it in python All right, so now I just figured out how to get the data from the weather website. So now if I do, so this is basically the API call. And then if we type in .csv instead, then basically we'll get the CSV file and it will start downloading. We have a long list of all the days and the temperature i think yeah the temperature so basically all we get right now is the temperature which is fine i think to start with just to kind of get going and see uh how far we get because i think it might be a little bit harder than i thought it was going to be so uh we're going to start with this and uh, then we're going to try to figure out how to uh, get all the different data out of this uh, csv file uh, and I'm basically just following this tutorial here. All right, and uh, yeah, so now I'm just gonna do this thing where we basically read uh, the CSV file. All right, so uh, now we're actually able to do some things with this data that we get. Then we get this, which is all of the, uh, well, it's basically some calculations on the data, data that we have, which this is pretty cool too, because you can just see like the averages and all that stuff, which is pretty interesting to just kind of see. But now what we're gonna be doing is getting into the actual, like using this data to predict the weather. So we're gonna have to kind of train the machine learning algorithm, I guess. So that's probably gonna be the next step. I may have figured it out. Uh, 
minus 1.394. Well, it gives us something, so that's good. But it's May right now, and it is very unlikely for it to be like negative 1 degrees. So um, I'm not exactly sure why it does that. All right, so I am currently running it. And uh, the thing is that since it hasn't seen the rest of the data, so like the days from this day until now, it doesn't want to predict a number for a, a year that it hasn't seen before. Ideally, we would do this 2019. Uh, today is the 29th of May. So we would like to be able to do that but then it gives this number, which I think is like either an error or it's the last uh, temperature recorded or something like that. All right, so I'm gonna stop there because after that I just dug myself into a rabbit hole of like trying to predict future uh, temperatures and I was just not able to do that for some reason. I'm still not really sure why I wasn't able to predict future values. And now it's been two months since I worked on this last and this morning I basically spent like two or three hours, I think, working on this and making it work. And I made it work now. So now I'm actually able to predict future uh, temperatures, which is what the goal was with this video. So basically I'm gonna do my best to try to explain how this works uh, as far as I understand it. So I used the scikit-learn library that basically comes with a lot of different machine learning methods and like pre-made uh, models and so basically how that works is you get input data that you put into an algorithm or a model basically and based on that input data the algorithm or model is going to try to calculate the output value that you want so let's say that we want to get 10 and the input value is 5 then it's going to do a calculation it's let's say that it assumes that it has to multiply it by 3 and then it gets 15 and then it compares it to 10 it sees that oh okay we were five off and then it takes it again does another calculation figures out that okay maybe i should just multiply it by two and then it outputs it again and it's 10 and that matches the uh, desired like output so then it knows that if it sees five then it should multiply it by two and that will then give it the desired output and then it does that like multiple times the more data that you have the more accurate your predictions are going to be i hope that kind of explains that that is like a very i think that's a high level overview of kind of how it works basically what we had as input val variables from the start was dates and dates look like this so what i did was i just converted that to be a long number instead so that then ends up being something like this so that that's going to be like what the algorithm uses to predict uh, our output variable which is going to be the temperature so based on this it's going to calculate the temperature and basically let's say that the temperature on that day was uh, 28 degrees it's going to take this number it's going to multiply it by something and it's going to try to get as close to 28 as it can and since we have like 18,000 dates and 18,000 temperatures it's going to do this over and over and over and it's going to get better at predicting a value that is as likely as possible to be the right one. One thing that would be more valuable would be to like have the weather type. So basically I would assume that my database has like different names for different weathers. I would assume that it's going to be like different names like this for the different weather types. And basically what you could do is you could just get all the different names that they use and convert them into like a dictionary where each name responds to a number and you do that for all the different weathers and then what you can do is you can use this number as an input variable into the algorithm as well and that will then mean that you'll be able to get a more accurate output variable most likely because you have another what do you call it, like data point uh, that you're using to calculate it and basically the more data points that you have maybe you have this maybe you have humidity or something like that and you use that as well as an input variable like the more data points that you have the more accurate your uh, prediction is going to be so that's kind of how this works at least as far as i understand it so then what what the algorithm would do is it would take 
an array of the different things so it would take the date like so it would take whatever weather type it was so maybe it was sunny and it would take uh, the humidity it sees what the output is going to be so we know that the output on that day was 28 degrees let's say based on these things what should each thing be multiplied by so this could be multiplied by x this could be multiplied by y and this is multiplied by z it does this and tries to figure out what it needs to multiply this number with and this number with this number with to a to to then be able to get this number or as close to it as possible and then it does this like over and over again for different dates that we already have where we have a known uh, output that we want to get and figures out kind of how to predict uh, this number the most accurately okay so that is as far as i understand it kind of how it works okay so what we have here is basically this is the data set and that is the same as this so this is a data set here Right now, what our data set contains is only going to be three different dates. It doesn't contain any of this. So that is what this contains. And that contains a long list of different dates. And then we create that list of all the temperatures that we want to predict. There are different like models for this machine learning you can use. And one of them, one of the main ones being like linear regression. And this is another one that I ended up using and uh, basically the reason for choosing this over like linear regression is that linear regression is basically what it sounds like which is a line a straight line fitted onto some data and that means that what that can do is it can kind of predict a trend for instance so basically let's say that you have a couple different data points at different levels but they all tend to move upwards or like downwards whatever direction but it it doesn't move up and down it's linear so it either moves up or down or sideways or whatever and basically what linear regression does is it tries to fit a straight line onto that data set and uh, that for instance that could be good if you're trying to predict like uh, let's say growth rate or something of a person which is always going to be up like they're always going to grow taller they're never going to get shorter at least most likely they're only going to get uh, taller so that means that for instance if you want to predict like how tall i will be next week or a five-year-old will be next week then you could use the different data points for how much it's grown every week before and then you can predict how much it will grow uh, in the next week and that's kind of how linear regression works. So that's kind of one of the things that you have to figure out when you start doing uh, this sort of stuff is you have to figure out whether you have linear data or non-linear data. I know that temperatures, for instance, is gonna be non-linear because at some points during the year, it's gonna be really high. And then at some points during the year, it's gonna be really low, the temperatures. And that's always gonna be the case. So always in summer, it's gonna be higher than it's gonna be during the winter, which means that it's never gonna be linear. It's always gonna be up during some time of the year and then down during some time of the year. So basically I had to figure out or find a model that was non-linear that would work with non-linear data. In that case, linear regression would not be good because it just basically tries to fit a straight line onto the data. So. Uh, what ended up working the best and i tried a few different ones for non-linear data and the one that works worked the best was uh, the de decision tree regressor and then what you use once you've found the model that you want to use is you basically do the model.fit and basically this fit function as far as i understand it what that does is basically that thing that i was showing you before uh, where it takes all of these variables it tries to multiply them by some number and uh, sees how close it gets to the, the desired output. And, uh, and that actually works right now, which is uh, quite cool, I think, because it actually predicts some weather and it predicts it with some accuracy as well. It would be really interesting to see kind of what ha would happen if I add uh, the weather type and humidity and like wind, all those sort of things. Uh, that you can think of that would be related to the weather so uh, what you do now is basically you run a program and then you can choose to look up the weather on a specific day 
or you can choose to predict the weather. If you type in nine, the program will end. If you type in three, then it will train the model. So basically, if you want to retrain it or if you're using this for the first time, then I would type in three first so that it just trains the model. Uh, it then outputs done training once it's done. And then you can type in two and then it shows this, which is enter the details of the date that you would like to predict. So 2019 month, I want to predict right now it's the 7th, so it's July. Uh, maybe I want to predict the weather on the 31st and then it outputs that temperature is estimated to be 17.9 degrees on the 31st of, of uh, July, which is also uh, unfortunately in Sweden that is actually likely to be true. So it could definitely be that it's going to be just 17.9 degrees. Let's say that I want to predict the weather on today, but next year. So uh, the 7th and what is today? It's the 23rd. So then next year it's estimated to be 18.2 degrees. And uh, yeah, so basically now this kind of works. It does what we want it to do. So that's basically what we wanted for this program to be able to do. So um, now I would say that I'm pretty much done with this. All right, so like I've said, I will add the links to all of the mo like the most useful sites that I've uh, used or the most useful articles that I read uh, on this topic in the description of this video in case you want to have a look at that. I'm quite happy that I actually got this done. It was qu like it was weird to do it two months ago and then get back to it just now and try to get back into it and understand what I wrote two months ago. Uh, that's always one of the struggles when you're working with these sort of things is uh, trying to get back into something that you wrote a while back that you haven't really looked at. But I'm really happy that we were able to actually make this work. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It was quite, kind of different doing uh, this sort of machine learning, which is something that I think is super interesting. So I'm thinking that I might do more of this, but uh, I'm not sure when the next thing is going to be. I'm really interested in like trying to predict stock prices. Uh, but I guess everyone would be interested in that. Uh, but I think it's very difficult to do it properly if it's even possible. But I think it would be fun as like an experiment to do, maybe to create like a model for it. And then maybe I put in like $100 or something like that and see how much money I can make in a week. Uh, I think that would be really interesting. But I think it might take a lot of time just to get the model working at all. But that is something that I kind of have in my head that I want to do. So uh, hopefully I get to do that at some point uh, but yeah I hope you enjoyed this I hope you learned something from uh, when I was trying to explain it uh, I'm like I said no expert so uh, if you really want to learn this you should probably go look at the, the articles that I'm linking and uh, maybe just look at some other stuff on it as well uh, I hope this just gave you kind of an understanding if you didn't know anything before this and maybe it was fun just to watch uh, me build it Alright, so that's it for this one. I hope I'll see you in the next one.